Well, welcome back to the home lab on this uh, very cold and frosty morning here. I've got a really interesting video for you today. We're going to look at something really quite weird and counterintuitive. Do gears that work and mesh together have to be circular? So I'm sure you all know about gears and you've probably seen uh, one of my other videos on gears and how they worked or you've played with Meccano gears. But have you ever thought of working with gears that aren't circular in shape? Well, what I thought we'd do is build some and see if they work. So, as you probably know about me, I got quite excited about this when thinking about it and I was trying to think of ways to demonstrate it to you. And I bought myself a little toy. Um, I couldn't wait for it to arrive. It was a second-hand scroll saw. And I thought, OK, here we go. If I've got one of these, all I need to do is use it to cut out some square-shaped gears and see if we can get them to mesh. So, I'll show you the little project that I made. So let's get started. And um, it's worth me saying that um, if you're really interested in something scientific, uh, one way is to sort of read about it in books or uh, look at my videos on YouTube. But actually, if you build something, you get a much better understanding of it. And I'm not a brilliant uh, builder, uh, but I do like having these little projects where I learn as I go along and I make some mistakes. And this was a classic example of that. So uh, what you're gonna see is not me building the most brilliant thing, though I'm really pleased with it, you're going to see the processes I went through when I put this together. So the first thing to do was to find myself the right template for some square gears that might just mesh. So I had a look on the internet for some odd shaped gear templates and I found a lovely template for a pair of square gears and I'll put a link to that below in the description about this video. So once I got that template printed out, I got myself some 5mm perspex and I bought some blue, some green and some purple to make really contrasting colours. I then took the green and blue perspex and clamped them together and glued one of the gear templates on top of the green piece that was on the top. I then waited for my scroll saw to arrive and when it arrived, excitedly, I started cutting out the gears. And if you think about it, because I've got the green and the blue bits of perspex sandwiched on top of each other, I only need to cut once. I only need to cut out one gear shape and then I can separate it and I've got two identical gears. So it was off to the scroll saw and the cutting began. So I was new to a scroll saw, so I thought I'd uh, have a go and see how I got on with the gears. And I made all the mistakes uh, you could possibly make, including putting the blade in upside down. Uh, but I got there in the end and put them on my desk. And if any of you've got a four year old in the house like I have, um, you know what happens next. Barry went and found them and he rather liked the shapes of the sort of squares inside uh, where the spokes were meant to be. So he took them off and had to go and colour them in but at least um, that was the template paper and not actually the uh, smooth, shiny surface of the Perspex. So with the gears cut out, it was time for a bit of a test. So I drilled a hole in the center of each gear and just got a scrap of wood, couple of nails through each hole, meshed the gears, and it was time to have a bit of a test. So if you're making something or experimenting with something, it's always good to have a project uh, that you can build, that you can keep afterwards, however odd, and this is a bit of an odd project, because you can look back and uh, look at the things that you've made, which is quite fun. So I thought, what can I do with this? And I thought, do you know what? I'll put them on a weird shaped background. And this later on morphed into, actually, let's make a wall clock out of this. So with the purple bit of Perspex, 
back to the scroll saw and I cut out a sort of funny sort of cloud shaped piece that I could stick the gears on and it would leave room for a clock mechanism. So with all the bits of Perspex cut out, it was time to put the thing together, remembering to leave the protective backing on the Perspex because otherwise you're bound to scratch it and damage your project. I rather like leaving the peeling off of that uh, protective backing until the very last moment so you have the great reveal at the end and you can see what a lovely project you've made. So the construction was fairly simple, but it took me a while. So what I did was I drilled a hole through the purple backing for the green gear and just mounted a bolt through there. Um, it's a fairly loose fit, um, which means it can turn freely, but it's not going to turn very fast. And then for the blue gear, I mounted a little 4.5 volt electric motor uh, behind the uh, purple base and push fitted the blue gear onto the shaft of that. Now the motor, uh, 4.5 volts, so it can run off a little battery pack um, that's got three AA batteries in it. It rotates at five RPM or thereabouts. So five RPM is gonna be quite good. It's gonna turn nice and slowly so you can see what's going on. It also has a nice little bit of electronics on it that if the gears stall, it's meant to stop and then unwind. In other words, rotate them the other way. But um, this seems to work okay, so it seems to turn the same way every time. So I got myself a fairly cheap clock mechanism, uh, mounted that on as well and put the long hands on. And in fact, they weren't very visible to begin with, um, so I've painted the ends of the hands white. Uh, what I might do at some stage, and I haven't done it yet, is put some LED lighting behind and then maybe um, you'll be able to see the hands better or maybe I'll just colour them in in white completely. Um, just as an aside, if you're making any crazy uh, projects that you want to kind of uh, hang up on the wall or something like that, a clock's always a good way to give them some kind of relevant use. So the time came to see if it was working and that lovely moment when you get to peel the protective layer off the sheets of Perspex. Um, I almost had to take it completely apart to do that, to uh, get it, um, the layer off really easily over the bolts and the gears, etc. But it went back together very easily. And in fact, with a bit of fiddling, I turned it on and it worked really well. So those of you that know a little bit about working with Perspex might have noticed something, that I've left the cutting of the gears and the uh, backing on them really quite rough. Um, you can take a blowtorch to that and make it lovely and smooth edged. I sort of started doing that and it seemed to be taking ages and then I thought, the risk of damaging my project, I don't need to bother. So I've kind of left it rather rough hewn and I quite like that look. So just before we end, a quick explanation of why these crazy square gears mesh. Um, there are more complex versions, but let's just go with this one. So the main thing you need is just two shapes that always mesh when you rotate them together. So they can be any crazy shape, but they must always be able to mesh because of the way you put the teeth on them. But it's also important that the teeth don't separate, so uh, mesh to begin with and then clear and there's a space between them. So the other thing that's really important is that the center of rotation between the two gears stays the same. Because if you start moving the gears apart, um, in this case, then the teeth will unmesh. So that's a fairly sort of simple explanation of this one. Um, another way of saying it is, as the side of the square, which is a small distance to the center, uh, comes along, it lines up with the, the corner of the other square, which is a bigger distance. But then as the corner of the other gear comes into place, this one then needs to have its side level with that. So the distance between the centers remains the same. So I do hope you enjoyed this video on odd shaped meshing gears like these square ones here. 
and uh, you like the way uh, we can do a little project together and actually build something to explain what's going on. If you enjoy my videos, um, it's nice of you to subscribe if you'd like to, and particularly to click on the bell so you get to hear when the next video is coming out. Um, also, if you'd like to support what I do, there's a little link at the bottom to buy me a coffee, uh, which enables me to go out and buy more bits and pieces to build more things for the videos that I do. And that'd be lovely, but don't feel compelled to do that at all. The main thing is enjoy the videos, and I'll be back soon with another one. See you then. Thank you.